M3, M3 Pro, M2 Pro, M1 Pro. Oh, so many MacBooks. Which one to choose? I don't know. Help me. I feel like with the M series chips, Apple did the impossible, created the best lineup of laptops you can think of. And that made choosing the right MacBook really difficult, especially for someone who doesn't think about MacBooks 24 seven, but don't worry, I got you. This will be the most useful MacBook buying guide you're ever gonna see. To those of you who are new to the world of MacBooks, let me give you a little history lesson. In 2020, Apple transitioned from Intel processors to their own chips and that changed everything. MacBooks became silent, energy efficient and incredibly powerful. That is pretty much where MacBooks stand even today. And the first MacBook with an M series chip was the M1 MacBook Air. And you know what? Apple still sells it for $1,000 and people are still buying it. Why? Because it's a damn good laptop. Visually, it doesn't look all that modern, old wedge design, display without a notch, no MagSafe, but it's still very much relevant. The M1, even in 2023 and 2024, is a serious contender capable of rivaling the majority of Intel processors you can find on laptops at that price. Yes, the M1 MacBook Air has only 8 gigs of RAM, unified memory, and only 256 gigs SSD, but a clever dual chip configuration of that said SSD allows the laptop to be pretty quick in all tasks. M1, even now, is pretty good at basic video and photo editing, simple 3D, and 95% of all office work. The new one will cost you $1,000, and a refurbished one can be found for less than that, but if you are super short on cash, buying a used one can be massively cost effective. I wonder if Apple will still sell it next year. That would be crazy. Yeah, imagine buying it once for around $1,000 and still being able to buy it four years later for the same money. People who bought it definitely made the right choice. Making the right choice when buying Macs is the main goal usually, and that also applies to accessories. For this video, PowerPeak sent me two great products every owner of a new iPhone and a new MacBook needs. The first one is this braided Type-C cable. You can get it in silver, black, it has a length of six feet, fully reversible, and can survive over 4,000 bends thanks to the tangle-free nylon cord with aluminum casing. I'm telling you, this cable will outlive anything Apple sells, and the second must-have product is this wireless charging station. What I like about it is that it can charge up to three devices at once, my iPhone, AirPods, and Apple Watch, and it comes with a wall adapter and a cable, so you don't have to buy them separately. Fast wireless charging allows charging an iPhone up to 40% faster than with any other standard wireless charging station. The versatile design allows you to charge your phone in three different positions, vertically, horizontally, and while it's folded. The station also has foreign object detection and surge protection, which ensures safe charging each time. It's really a great charger. I will leave links to both of these products. Use promo code ARTHUR to get 35% off. After the M1 came the M1 Pro and M1 Max and 14 and 16 inch MacBook Pros. Those chips are phenomenal, even today. But I think we should continue with MacBook Airs and talk about the M2 MacBook Air. Don't worry, I will come back to M1 Pro later. So the M2 MacBook Air was released in 2022 and it was a really controversial device. People were super pumped about the new generation of Apple Silicon and sadly, the M2 didn't really meet the expectations. It was a bit more powerful in every way, but the SSD was a one chip instead of two, and the M2 MacBook Air still comes only with eight gigs of unified memory, which means that in some tasks, it can be even slower than the M1. However, it makes up for that in every other part of it. Improved design, better display, louder speakers, MagSafe, and the two sizes to choose from, 13.6 and 15.2 inches. We have reviews of those MacBooks on the channel, and if you're considering one, check them out they're really useful. At $11 to $1,300 for a new one, the M2 MacBook Airs are great. They're perfect for someone who wants a modern MacBook for relatively simple tasks, 1080p video editing and Final Cut, doing Lightroom, <laughs> watching movies, editing documents, and so on. It is a very fashionable and comfortable laptop, perfect for everything that's light and works great as a gift for your parents or younger siblings who just need a MacBook and don't plan on doing any advanced or complicated work. And if you're really persistent, you can find it at really good prices. But you know what's priceless? Your likes and comments. So make that great subscribe button red, hit the thumbs up and leave a comment to warm up my heart. That helps a lot. With MacBook Airs done, we're left with the most controversial lineup of MacBooks. Three generations of Pro and Max chips. Choosing the right one for you can make your head explode. I'm going to make it easy for you. The more money you can spare on a laptop and the more power you need, the newer the chip you should choose. Sounds obvious. Where's the fun in that? 
Oh, okay, okay, let's do one more time, but in reverse. M3 series chips this year are undoubtedly great. The base M3 in a $1600 MacBook Pro just gives it enough performance to rock the ProMotion display and even some heavy applications without a hitch. The base M3 MacBook Pro comes with 8 gigs of unified memory and half a terabyte SSD, and this is probably the most questionable configuration. 8 gigs of unified memory, like I already said many times, is not enough for any professional work. On small bursty tasks, 8 gigs is enough, but if you decide to export a long 4K video or export a ton of photos in Photoshop or Lightroom, get ready for long waiting times. 3 nanometers are cool and all those extra features do make this chip quite a powerhouse, but in my opinion, it is not enough for really demanding work. Some might say that it's worth upgrading to 16 gigs of memory, but I'm strongly against that simply because that will make it an $1800 laptop. And that is only $200 less than M3 Pro MacBook Pro and that laptop for $2,000 will be much more powerful. It will do video editing better, 3D and exporting photos will be faster, and it will be a more future-proof laptop overall. However, there's only one category of people who should go for the base M3 Pro. People who are transitioning from the MacBook Air, but let me explain. When you have a MacBook Air and try to do creative work, you understand your limitations, so you don't really push it to its limit. But from a pro MacBook, you expect insane performance. So if you own an M1 or M2 MacBook Air, the best new MacBook you can buy without breaking a bank is the base M3 Pro MacBook Pro for $2,000. It will be the most future-proof laptop. Please know that I didn't say it is the best deal for a MacBook because I will come back to that later. So if you want to do really professional work like heavy video editing or complex 3D, you should either max out the M3 Pro with more RAM and more cores, or you should go straight for the M3 Max. M3 Max is insanely powerful and can do absolutely everything you can think of, but it is really expensive, so get ready to pull out some real dough. <laughs> if you want to know more about the M3 lineup of MacBooks, we made a separate video, so click here to watch it, it's really useful. Because right now I think we should look at the real heavy hitters in terms of power per dollar ratio. And I am talking about the M2 Pro and M1 Pro MacBooks. I think this part will be especially interesting for those of you who actually own these MacBooks because I personally know quite a few, so what's the dealio? If you remember, the M2 Pro and M1 Max MacBooks came out just recently in January. January. This means the M2 lineup of Pro and Max chips is still very modern and quite powerful. The M2 Pro is for sure slower than the M3 Pro in certain tasks, but that also means that the M2 Pro is faster than the M3. M2 Pro has more cores, both CPU and GPU, and it comes with more memory, 16 gigs instead of 8. Aside from internals, all three generations of 14-inch and 16-inch MacBook Pros are very similar. Identical displays, identical speakers, identical design, everything that that matters is top-notch. The only important difference you should pay attention to is the chip inside. Even the base M2 Pro is a powerhouse, capable of some insane stuff. And for the same $1600 as the base M3 MacBook Pro, it is a really interesting option to consider. I would rather buy the M2 Pro for $1600 than the base M3 for the same price. But wait, what about M2 Max? Here, the situation is a bit more complicated. And it has nothing to do with the performance of the M2 Max. That is a fantastic chip, super powerful and efficient. The only problem it has is availability. To get it, you'd have to monitor Apple's refurbished page day and night to find a good deal on one of those. Personally, I don't think that M2 Max now is a really good deal, simply because even if you find a refurbished M2 Max MacBook Pro, it will cost you more or less the same as the upgraded M3 Pro. And that M3 Pro in most tasks will perform really similarly to the M2 Max. And now I probably will say the crazy thing, but the M1 Pro is still worth buying now more than ever. In past videos I claimed that it's the best value MacBook you can find, and this is still true today. Same gorgeous display, design, all the newest features, no compromises anywhere, all at a very affordable price. It is cheaper than the M3 MacBook Pro and has all the same bells and whistles. The CPU of M1 Pro might be a tad bit slower than M3, and the GPU might handle some tasks a bit worse, but the M1 Pro is much faster than the M1 or M2 MacBook MacBook Air in every task imaginable. So by paying literally the price of a 15-inch MacBook Air, you can get a laptop that will be more powerful, have a better screen, and overall be a very capable machine. It might not handle ray tracing and complex graphics as well as even the base M3 
3 or M2 Pro, but it is still a very, very capable computer. And if you have one of those and the performance is enough for you, I see no point in upgrading. Wait a few more years until M1 Pro will not be able to handle your workload and then upgrade. Apple has truly built the best lineup of MacBooks ever. For every price point, there is a capable machine that covers all the needs of a potential audience. But that doesn't mean that you cannot make a mistake when buying a MacBook. There are many hidden little things to consider. So be sure to watch our video about that in which we in detail go over each potential mistake you can make and tell you how to avoid it. Thanks for watching guys. See you in the next one.